Some have asked us, does hydro glass actually work? Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. I let Nick put a tape line down the center, but he didn't quite make it to the center and that's fine. But we're gonna be doing hydro glass on just one part of the windshield. You need a windshield coating because you want to drive safely in the rain. You want it to be easier to clean. Ivan, why else would they want a windshield coating? Safety, as you mentioned, is the biggest thing. Also, not having the wipers going back and forth in front of your face is a great reason to have a windshield coating. So the first thing we're gonna do is clean the windshield. We're saving the rest of the vehicle for another video. So what we'll be doing is rinse this wash on the windshield. We have our perforated synthetic decontamination towel. We'll be using it as well, but we'll be cleaning both sides, not just the one side. We'll be prepping both sides as if we're gonna be doing the hydro glass on both. And that way we'll be able to show you exactly what hydro glass does before and after. Now, I didn't know what the plan was, Ivan. I just knew you said, you're gonna do this side. Yeah. So I thought we were gonna not even clean that side for the real no. dramatic 50-50. No, we're There's gonna still gonna be a dramatic 50-50, trust me. Okay, normally we teach foam, rinse foam. Chemical, rinse chemical. So yeah. I wouldn't usually put something on to paint without pre-treating and rinsing it first. Yeah. But it's glass. Why is that a different thing, Ivan, with glass? So glass is much more difficult to scratch, first of all. Secondly, this windshield needs to be replaced. There's a uh, stone chip in the middle there, and underneath that beautiful tape line, there's also a crack. And I, are we deconning that side or no? Yeah. Okay. I don't mind having a sopping wet decontamination towel when I need a little extra lubrication. And we just started with a little rinseless, so I'm gonna use what's in that towel to my advantage. I yep. I just kind of half toss that to you. And this is honestly my favorite use for the decon towel because I do it at every wash. I'm always hitting my windshield, not hitting, but I'm using our decontamination towel with the perforated side to just shave off bug guts. It does an excellent job at that. Whether it's bug guts on your front bumper or on your windshield, the decon towel is a fantastic thing to use after you've washed. No pressure, just a few extra passes. And, uh, no need for iron remover, which we typically use as our clay lube, right, Ivan? Right, but the rinse and wash in this case is more than adequate, does a great job, and that's really all we need. What's next? Next, we dry it. Wow, we have this magic assistant. Yeah, things just float in from outside. The drying blanket, crowd favorite. So Ivan, after drying, what's next? We're actually gonna be polishing the windshield. And the reason for the polishing is to make sure that we deep clean. Now, at this stage, we can use any pad, any machine that we want. As long as we're using the gold standard polish, we're good. Ivan, it's times like these, I'm grateful that we put 30 foot cords on our polishers. Yeah, definitely. Next step is the polishing. We have a gold standard pad here, and you can use the pad that you want. It's not really, has no real consequence here. We could use the rotor, we could use the DA. This is the one we had set up for a previous video. We could use our red jeweling pad, we could use the wool pad. At this stage, it really doesn't make a difference. We're using this to deep clean the paint. I have our DA polisher set at speed two, could have used a rotary. Again, doesn't really matter. The goal is to make sure we've removed everything from the windshield. Is there enough gold standard polish on there to yep. keep it going? All right. So Nick, to remove the polish residue, rinse and stamp and towel. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sylvie. Followed by a dry towel. This is the best way to remove polish, whether you're on paint or glass, it's just a joy. The rinseless wash on the towel just cuts through those polishing oils. And yeah, exactly. A dry towel for the finished wet. And finally, panel prep. 
So panel prep will remove the last if there's anything on that glass. I've got my uh, towel fairly damp. It's a little warm in here today, so it's drying quickly. So I'm gonna do the windshield in small sections. Now the reason we've prepped both sides of the windshield is to give you a true 50-50. We could have left it dirty. That wouldn't have been fair. You are a man of rules and fairness. You're doing this for the, I thought we were giving just the, that obvious 50-50, but no, we're doing this the right way. No, no chance for anyone out there to say, you cheated, you did it wrong. Right, the other reason for that is we don't wanna let the customer go with half the windshield coated. So when we're done doing the water test in an hour, then we'll be able to uh, coat the rest of the windshield. Um, what should folks know? And I'm, I'm gonna go just make sure I get everything. What should folks know about hydro glass and the, and the prep process? What, what, is it, what is a critical step here? What do they not wanna miss out on in, in the prep? Because I know yeah. when it comes to ceramic coatings, it's all about the prep. Right. Basically, make sure your glass is as clean as it can be. That's what we're doing here. It feels almost grabby at this point. So it yeah. feels like squeaky clean as well, I describe it. Squeaky clean is exactly what we're after. Now, we're wearing gloves. It's because we're working with chemicals, but also we don't want our body oils touching the surface. Okay. Next, Nick, hydro glass is on its way. Wow, thanks again, Sylvie. All right, we've got our very familiar foam coating and sealant applicator. Yep. And we've got hydro glass that might not be familiar to you, but a lot of the same principles you're used to are gonna hold true with a couple of tweaks. Right. First, we're gonna put eight to 10 drops on the applicator. And that's normally enough to do a whole windshield, but we also wanna make sure we have enough on the applicator. Kind of a common technique is usually just to drop it on there. What is actually gonna work better, Ivan, is if you put your dropper right up on here yeah. and just do one of these, right? Exactly. Now you're gonna conserve product. Well, right. not only that, you're not gonna be putting it everywhere and it's not gonna be running down the side of your bottle. There you go. Excellent. Okay, that was eight. Kind of large looking, but they went right into the applicator. Yeah. All right. Now, you can see there's plenty on there. Does it matter what direction I go in? Doesn't matter. You can go up, down, left, right, triangles, octagons, squares, circles. All we're doing is getting it on the glass. So okay. Nick is boxing in the outside, making sure he doesn't miss anything. Boxing in. And then just go. filling in the center. Let's see, I'm gonna make sure I don't miss a thing. There's no need to go over it five or six times. Once is enough. You're, only, if, you're only applying it once. But if you go over it five or six times, is there anything bad that's gonna happen there? Uh, it's not gonna help. You're just wasting your time. Okay, just triple checking the box was good. Yeah. Did I miss any spots with my circular motions? No, you're good. I keep thinking that I did, Ivan. I just want this to be perfect. No, it looks good from this okay. side. All right, perfect. Next. We wait for a minimum of 15 minutes. So let's wait 15 minutes, we'll be back. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes here. The key here, minimum 15 minutes. 15 minutes or more, you're totally green lighted to go ahead and wipe off. We're not actually leveling, we're just wiping this off and you're gonna see how easy it is. There's a lot of haze here. You wanna look for that white haze. All you take is your towel and this is like wiping through butter. This is just nothing at all. And at this point, I'm gonna hit it with a clean side just to make sure if I miss something. It's about this simple. The only thing I'm gonna add to this right now, you wanna give yourself an hour before you expose this windshield to the elements. Yeah, so definitely you wanna wait that hour. And if you wait longer, it's even better. So 15 minutes to an hour after applying it or after you level? No, so 15, minutes before leveling or removing the, the haze that's there. It's actually the- I keep the, saying leveling, I'm so used yeah, to saying it, yeah. It's, not, it's a coating, but it's a very different coating. The, what we have coming up is the carrier. So we remove that, those excess carriers that have dried, that's great. Now we wait at least one hour before getting it wet. After you wipe it off. After you've wiped it off. Now, if I want to do a second layer, a second coat, of hydro glass, walk right. me through what I do then. So if you want to do a second layer or a second coat, you wait one hour, then you apply the second coat, you wait that 15 minutes again, 
level it, wait an hour before getting it wet. The second coat, normally we don't condone, we don't recommend, we don't want you to do a second coat on your paint. But glass is a slightly different animal. And the hydro glass, the first layer you're putting on fills the pores, it's great, it's gonna last a long time. But if you want it to last just a little longer, if you wanna get better hydrophobic performance, and if your window is a little older, then that second application is good. Now, if you have a brand new car, one application is all you need, but over time, the windshield, we don't see it much, but it gets pitted and it gets all sorts of little things in it from all the rocks hitting it and uh, sand and dust and whatever. So by doing that, you get a little better. Now, when it starts to rain, this is where people go wrong with a glass coating. They put their wipers on and they keep wiping and they keep wiping and they keep wiping. The problem with that is, your glass coating actually isn't exposed. Right now, you're wiping over traffic film. So when it starts to rain, you're gonna turn your wipers on, but just once. You can use your windshield washer fluid. Windshield washer fluid is gonna take away the road film, it's what it's designed to do, and then your hydro glass is gonna perform the way it should. Folks out there who aren't professional detailers and just bought that bottle, yep. they may want two layers just because they're like, hey, I paid for this bottle, what else am I gonna do with it? Right, well, you can also do the side windows. You can do your shower. That is a great use for it. And if you have more than one car in the family, by all means, treat your loved ones and treat your friends to a really special treat. What about glasses? Glasses, yes. Now, depending on your glasses, uh, my glasses came with an oleophotic coating and a few other coatings on them. I've tried the hydro glass. It hasn't really made a difference on my glasses. Now, my sunglasses that don't have the oleophilic coating on it made a world of difference. Your phone screen is another good thing to use this for, but you don't want to use anything hydrophobic, especially hydro glass on the inside of your vehicle. You can use it on your navigation screen, but please do not use it on the inside of your windshield, the inside of your side windows. Uh, it can cause fogging. We are gonna actually go ahead and wash the rest of this vehicle. We just wanna do this demo as in like, hey, maybe I don't wanna do anything else. I just wanna coat my glass. I don't wanna do the whole detail. How do you do that? So you're not gonna have to worry about the rest of the detail. Essentially, we'll just appear back on screen in a second. Yeah. We're gonna go wash the rest of this vehicle and then we'll do the final test of the 50-50 comparison, the side-by-side -side to see what it looks like with the hose. Yeah. Ivan, it's been an hour. We washed the vehicle. Hydro glass was buffed off an hour ago. It, it's time to do the final test. Right, the water. Let's put the wipers down. Let's see what happens. Oh, so, should I remove the, uh, the tape line? I'll leave it there. Not that we'll need it much. So on this side, you see the water is sheeting. You go over there, there's a bit of a difference. I, uh, you know, it's not wow. that dramatic, but it's there. That's incredible. So what does that mean when you're driving down the road and it's raining out? What's that gonna look like? What's that gonna feel like? How's the safety gonna improve? Right, so on the driver's side, you'll actually see where you're going. On this side, everything becomes blurry and fuzzy. We put a camera inside the car and the difference that you'll see when you're driving is that the side that has the hydro glass remains clear, whereas the side that doesn't Everything is hard to see through. It becomes fuzzy. So that's the difference hydroglass can make. Now that was a, you know, a mist. If we go into just a nice shower, let's find the right setting here. So even a misty sort of showery rain, we're getting accumulation here. On that side, the beads just grow large enough to go down by themselves. And as you're driving, they're gonna fly off the paint. It's right. Gonna, it's gonna be a joy. If you never experienced this as a driver, it's so fun. Yeah. And the more water you have, the better it works. So that light little mist, eh, not really a, a big game changer. But that heavy downpour where everyone is going down the highway with their four ways on and the wipers going at full speed and they can't see where they're going, you'll be seeing exactly where you're going, what's happening on the road, or passing that truck with that big spray coming off the tires you'll be able to see where you are safely. One question folks might have, Ivan, is why use hydro glass versus another one of our amazing coating? Why a specific glass coating? I mean, I can see it. Yeah. I can see it, but the, the, I, I'd like to get your Ivan answer. The main reason is right there, the wiper blades. So 
it's more resistant to friction on glass than any paint coating. And we are talking about friction from the wiper blades. They do exert a lot of friction. We want to make sure that they are doing their job properly by having clean glass, but at the same time, the less you need to use them, the better it is. A regular paint coating on your side windows is fine. There's no wipers going back and forth over it. And one thing that's very important when you're using a glass coating is how you treat it after it's been installed. The simple thing to do is it starts to rain, a little bit of windshield washer fluid, let it go, then put the wipers away. You've removed the road film that's accumulated over time. Now it's very easy to see where you're going and you don't need the wipers. What I'm noticing is that looked cleaner earlier, cleaner quote unquote. Yeah. It's just taking an eon for it to sort of shed the water. So right. if you're moving, that can get sort of like splotchy on your windshield. It won't go anywhere. It's like, it yeah. feels much less safe, whereas this just shoots right off. Now, Nick, we've got a tool here that I think you can get that will make a sort of a visual impression of what wind going by the windshield is like. Let's try it. The leaf blower. You're the wind. I'm the wind, guys. Yeah, so Nick is playing the role of the wind. I gave him equal play and look how much cleaner that is. That still has all that water there. Right, yeah, exactly. That's, That's what amazing. it does. And you can see his look is you know, surprised because he actually is. Okay, but no, I, I know this was gonna work. It's just, folks, it takes time. We have lights, we have cameras, we have human beings and schedules. So to set this up took a while. Yeah. Uh, to do this visual right took a while. So I've never actually done this visual on camera in a produced video. Yeah. And, and you insisted that we prep that side. I was thinking if we just left it dirty, surely the 50-50 would be really pronounced. You're like, no, let's do this the right way because yeah. you knew the difference would still be there. Yeah, so the prep on both sides is identical, as you saw earlier in the video. Even polished. Yeah, polished, panel prep, the whole thing. The decontamination towel. We have clean glass here. On that side, we have protected glass. I mean, I've done ceramic coatings on, on the windshield before. I also happen to be ceramic coating the, the wiper blades for a while, and I would get wiper chatter. Right. Now, well, whatever wiper... chatter means to you, it just it, it's like the, the blades is not working right. Yes. So what's happening is your wiper blade is supposed to be perpendicular to the glass. It's supposed to be straight up and down. But over time, through friction, everything, and if you live in a northern climate, sometimes you have a little bit of ice on the windshield and you try to use the windshield wipers to get it off, not a good idea. What happens is this arm actually twists. And when it twists, the wiper going up like this is fine. The wiper coming down like this, if it's perpendicular, it bends a little going this way and it bends a little going that way. But what we're doing here is if your wiper arm is bent just a little, and normally it's bent this way, so going up, it'll be fine, but going down, there's no more friction on the glass to bend that rubber over. So instead of bending over like this, it's going down the glass like this. Once you've ceramic coated your windshield? Once you've ceramic coated your windshield because you're removing the friction. So I mean, let's say you have window chatter, you have windshield chatter. Right. What do you do now? So you look at your wiper blade and you see that it's not perpendicular to the glass. Okay. And in this case, this one is not perpendicular to the glass. It's tilted a little bit. What we do is we take out an adjustable wrench. The reason for the adjustable is very simple. You want to get it on the wiper arm, put it there, and then squeeze it on. That way it's not gonna be moving on you. And now I wanna twist this back this way. I look, and now it's sitting properly. So I can take this off, no damage here, and now my wiper arm is perfectly straight. So you're just trying to get it set as perfectly perpendicular at that resting position as possible. Right, at the resting position, it should be at 90 degrees to the windshield. That seems pretty simple. It is. So you're not gonna get windshield wiper chatter from a windshield ceramic coating if you don't coat the blades and they're at 90 degrees. Yeah, if and those two variables are taken care of, nothing to worry about. Right, and don't worry about coating the blades, just clean them, that's all you need. You don't wanna coat the blades. No, you don't wanna coat the blades. Now, which way to bend this? Even without looking at the wiper arm, if it's going smoothly up and shuttering down, 
That means the wiper is twisted this way. That means you need to twist the arm down like I did. If it's going, if it's shuddering on the way up, but smooth on the way back, you need to twist it the other way. That's easy enough, Isaac. Yep. All right, I hope we've blown your minds as it relates to windshield ceramic coatings. And if you think this is pretty cool, ceramic coatings on paint are even cooler. So let's get one final look there as we invite them, Ivan, to check out the video that is now in the center of your screen. If you want more of these beads because the, the video box is covering it, you better click on that, on that box and we'll show you more. Mm -hmm.